in today's video we're going to look at all things diffraction based so double slit single slit diffraction gratings it comes up a lot at a level um, so make sure you understand everything in this video so first of all what is diffraction well diffraction is when a wave spreads out when it travels through a gap that is similar to its wavelength like in this diagram here so the gap here is similar to its wavelength so after the gap um, it will spread out um, and this is really useful because it is demonstrated by light traveling through very very small gaps and it also helps explain why sound can be heard round a corner or through a door um, where light can't because the wavelength of sound um, is much much bigger than the wavelength of light roughly of the same order as a doorway so talking about you know centimeters meters um, as opposed to light the wavelength is hundreds of nanometers so you need a very very small gap for light to be able to diffract now this is a huge deal in the 1800s because this is evidence of light being a wave, the fact it can diffract. Only waves can diffract, um, particles cannot, which was one of the kind of abiding theories at the time, uh, which eventually visited in quantum theory. So um, let's have a look at this um, idea of the double slip. So we've got a light source here, which in the 1800s would have just been a lamp of some sort, um, and it travels through a single slit, then goes through a double slit, then travels to a screen, um, and there's a pattern seen on the screen. Now the pattern we get um, are these even dark and bright fringes um, or dark and bright spots that are even in width, even in intensity um, and we need to be able to explain them. So um, let's have a look at the bright and dark fringes first of all that are observed. Now first thing to note in this setup um, is the light coming through the single slit, the reason there's a single slit there first is so that light is coherent. Um, that means all the light travelling through the single slit has exactly the same frequency and has a constant phase difference. Not in phase necessarily but a constant phase difference. Now when it travels through a double slit, um, this drawing is not going to be perfect um, but the waves will overlap and when they reach the screen um, an effect known as superposition happens. Now this can lead to one of two things. When you have the bright fringes and that means the waves are meet um, in phase with each other. So a peak, me peak, peak meets up with a peak, um, which is also known as constructive interference. This means the amplitude is doubled effectively, meaning the fringe is bright. At the dark spots, um, the waves meet in antiphase, or in 180 degrees or pi out of phase. So this means it's called destructive interference, um, and that means a peak meets a trough, which means they cancel out with each other. So just like in the diagram here, the two peaks line up, means the amplitude is doubled. Um, if the peak meets a trough, that means the amplitude is zero, that means it's a dark spot. This effect overall is known as superposition, um, and those are the two things that we come out of, the bright, uh, bright and the dark fringes. And those fringes, like we said, are even intervals and they have the same intensity throughout. So let's have a closer, more detailed look at the setup and see if we can derive an equation um, to help explain, well, how do the fringe spacing vary? What affects it? Um, so we've got two slits. We're going to call a slit separation S um, and we've got the double slit to the screen. The distance uh, between those two is capital D and W is the distance between the center um, of the um, central fringe um, and the center of the first fringe. We're just looking at those two fringes for now. Okay, now it goes without saying all these quantities uh, will have to be in uh, meters to be able for this to for this to work. Okay, now we're going to derive this equation using um, the idea of similar triangles. Um, so first triangle we're going to draw is this one. So um, the two rays from each slit will meet up at that first fringe. We're just looking at that one um, for now. Um, and that will form a triangle, um, which we're going to sketch out properly in a second. Um, but it's really important to note is that those two rays must be in phase. Half difference of those two um, waves has to be one wavelength. For each fringe, it has to be a whole number of wavelengths. For this first fringe, it has to be one wavelength difference because the peak has to meet with the peak of the other. Now, before we have a look at these triangles, uh, we're going to use something called the small angle approximation, which is, and um, these fringes are actually very close together. I know it doesn't look like that on the diagram. So the angles are going to be very small, roughly less than 10 degrees. So we can use a couple of assumptions. Now, with the first triangle I've drawn um, on the screen, um, I've got distance S is my left-hand side. Um, now, the next um, length of the triangle, we can also say is S, even though it won't be exactly the same because angle is small, um, it means that we can kind of make that assumption. Um, and we said it's one wavelength, it's gonna be the path difference, so therefore the opposite um, side is gonna be one wavelength. Now we're going to compare this to the larger triangle on the screen. Now the larger triangle on the screen, which I'm drawing out now, this blue triangle, um, has the D, the distance between the slits to the screen, as one side, but because the angle again is small, um, we can say that the hypotenuse is also going to be D, and the opposite is going to be the width distance between the two fringes. 
Now using this, what we can do is just derive a couple of quick relationships using trigonometry. Say sine theta of the first triangle is wavelength divided by S, the slit separation. The bigger triangle, sine theta equals W over D. Now these are both sine theta, so we can equate them together. Um, th a lambda over S equals W over D, and rearrange it for W, the width of the fringes equals the wavelength, times by the distance from the slit to the screen, divided by the slit separation. Um, so that's our equation for the double slit formula. So let's have a look next then how we can use that equation to understand what happens when we have different types of lights going into our double slit. So what about instead of monochromatic light, if we had a lot white light which is made up of all the colours. Um, so using this relationship, the idea is if wavelength is bigger, um, then if everything else is constant, then the width of the fringes has to be bigger. So red light has the uh, wider fringes because it has a higher wavelength, and blue light has narrower fringes or closer together um, because it has a lower wavelength. So if we were to view this on a screen and we'd have white light kind of surrounded by blue because it hasn't diffracted that much, surrounded by red, and then you'd have white and then you'd have blue and red again and so on and so forth. Obviously you'd have grey, green and the other colours of the rainbow in between, um, but that principle will work with all of those colours. Also worth noting, if you were to make the distance to the screen bigger, the fringes um, get further apart, and if you were to um, increase the slit separation, the width of the fringes would decrease because those two things are inversely proportional. Now, what would happen if I replaced the double slit with a single slit? Well, we still get an interference pattern, which I know sounds weird. It seems like the wave would just kind of go straight on and you'd have a big blob of light in the middle. Well, you do, but you do have these smaller fringes either side of it. So the intensity of the wave would look a little bit like this. So in the center, you'd have a really big peak, big maximum. Um, and then you'd have these kind of smaller, dark and bright patches either side of it. So this central maximum, uh, which is what it's known as, is very wide. It's two times the width of the other fringes. Um, and central maximum, if we have um, monochromatic light, would just be one color. Um, and then you'd have even maximums and minimums, maxima and minima, uh, decreasing in intensity. So they're not even at all um, in terms of their intensity, unlike for a double slit. Now for this equation, which you're not given to you um, in your equation sheet uh, for AQA, but you will be expected to use if they do give it to you, so let's have a look finally at diffraction gratings. So diffraction gratings, if you shine light through them, um, you'll find a diffraction pattern, um, but it won't be these fringes, okay? They are called orders, um, but they are, look kind of similar. They are more spread out and they have a high intensity. Um, and the explanation for how they form is exactly the same as for our double slit equation. So you have these patches of constructive and destructive interference. Um, I've put a picture down here that can help because um, I won't be able to draw this um, in at all. So um, there is an equation to uh, use when we're using diffraction gratings. Um, I'm going to derive it for you now. So zooming a bit closer to our setup, uh, we've got our diffraction grating, which is formed of many slits. So effectively, we can kind of use the same kind of ideas as for our double slit, um, but we're going to define our terms slightly differently. A small case D in this case is the distance between um, the slits, or in this case, the gratings. So the center of one to the center of another. And on the screen, we've got these things, which we say were called orders. Now the bright spots are orders, and the central one is the zeroth order, then uh, going up and down from that, you've got N equals one, the first order, second order, third order, um, etc. Now, just like with the previous derivation, we're only focusing on that first fringe, that first order um, here initially. Now, um, when we're looking at the first order, that means that the path difference between one ray from one uh, grating to the next um, has to be one wavelength. If it was the second order, it'd be two whole wavelengths, um, but they have to be in phase, so it's one wavelength. So looking at this little triangle we're left with down here, um, the angle, again, we're going to use small angle approximation, because this angle will be very small, and we can say that D, the distance between the two, uh, two of the gratings, um, is equal to also the, so the hypotenuse is equal to the other side of the triangle, um, and that means means that the one wavelength on the other side is our opposite. So using sine theta again, we can say sine theta equals the wavelength opposite divided by um, D um, for N equals one. Now, if we're looking at instead of the first um, order, we can look at the second order. Well, this time it would mean it would be two wavelengths path difference. And then third order will be three wavelengths path difference, etc., etc. So we can modify this a little bit and say, instead of sine theta equals wavelength over D, we can say equals N wavelength over D, where N is just number of orders which is our integer so this leaves us with our overall equation which you get given which is d times by sine theta equals n number of orders uh, multiplied by the wavelength of the light 
Now, one of the trickiest parts in exam questions is that sometimes they don't give you uh, what D is, the grating spacing. They'll give you the number of lines per meter or per millimeter. Um, so what you've got to do to work this out is to convert to meters first. So in, in this example, I've got 300 uh, lines per millimeter. That means 300 times by 10 to the 3. Uh, so that's 300,000 lines per meter. And then I've got to do 1 divided by X. That gives me the spacing between each one. Sometimes questions ask you, how do you work out what is the maximum number of orders that are observed? So how you do this, you rearrange the equation of the number of orders and then realize, well, actually, the maximum this angle can be for diffraction is 90. If it was any bigger, it would be reflection. So sine 90 is 1. So that makes our equation a bit easier. It means number of orders equals D, uh, the diffraction grating spacing divided by the wavelength. Now, you'll have an answer. You need to round it down because you can only have a whole number of orders. So, for example, if it's 5.7, then it's 5 orders maximum that are visible.